Welcome to the video series Programming Animation A Project Based Approach. In this project, we're going to talk, talk about how to program billiard ball collision. This is a walkthrough. We'll talk about the math behind the algorithm. So, this is what it looks like. Uh, this is using processing. Two balls uh, bouncing around. This is, the, uh, this is the law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy. And once you get that to work, then you can program it so that you can have. Uh, an array of ball objects and then make them collide. So there it is. So it turns out that this is amazing that the math is actually not that hard and we'll go through uh, the math in this video. Okay, so this project will require some trigonometry. It also requires some object-oriented programming and the use of arrays. So a little bit of a physics uh, background. An object with mass m and velocity v has momentum, the product of m and v. So an object has a large momentum if the object is heavy, has a big mass, or it's going fast, has a big velocity, or both. So two objects with masses m1 and m2 and velocity v1 and v2 have total momentum equals to the, the sum of their individual momentum. In other words, m1 times v1 plus m2 times v2. An object with mass m and velocity v has kinetic energy, one half mv squared. And so two masses with m1 and m2 and velocities v1 and v2 we have total kinetic energy equal to the sum of their individual kinetic energy. In other words, one half m1 v1 square plus one half m2 v2 square. The law of conservation of momentum says that for two objects to collide, the total momentum before and after is the same. So in other words, m1 times v1 initial plus m2 times v2 initial is equal to m1 times v1 final plus m2 times v2 final. So the picture on the left is before the collision, which is these are the initial velocity. The picture on the right is the velocity after the collision. The law of conservation of energy says that for two objects to collide, the total energy is conserved. Uh, in other words, the energy before the collision and the energy after the collision is the same. So on the left is the kinetic energy before the collision, and on the right is the kinetic energy after the collision. This law says that they have to be the same. So collision that conserves both momentum and kinetic energy is called elastic collisions uh, in physics. Um, no energy is lost due to friction or, or heat. So we have uh, these two equations. And notice that we actually only have two unknowns, which is the final velocity of the first object and the final velocity of the second object. So we have two equations, two unknowns. A little bit of algebra can help you solve for those two unknowns. So we won't go over the proof of this, but I'll put a link at the bottom to show you how this is done. Uh, but if I solve for v1 final and v2 final, I get uh, this set of equations. And it turns out that this is a very simple equation, and we just got to plug it in and be able to simulate elastic collision. So let's look at the simulation and the distribution code. So here's the 1D uh, version of this. This two ball, and this, this is exactly programming the, the, the formula that I just showed you from the slides, uh, obeying the law of conservation of momentum and the law of conservation of energy. So this is kind of a simple uh, case, but it turns out that the solution to this case will help us solve the solution to the two-dimensional case. And so let's talk about the two-dimensional case. Uh, by the way, we'll, I also will post the distribution code for this. Uh, and so the, for the 1D version, Again, if you know processing, this is very simple. If not, processing is very easy to learn. Uh, there's a ball object. It actually gives you the entire ball object code. So this is the ball object. All it does is that um, it draw the ball, you move the ball, and then if it hits the edge of the ball, you bounce back. And, and that's the ball object. And then in, uh, in the main driver uh, class, uh, you have to just program in basically this method, which is the collision method taking two ball objects and you just plug in the formulas that I just showed you from the slide and this is basically five lines of code uh, can give you that that uh, 1D elastic collision. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, actually, uh, once you get that to work you can actually answer a couple of questions. One question you can answer is uh, if both objects have the same mass and one object is at rest then what happens? And so you can you can figure out from the formula, but you can also do this uh, with your program once you have have, run, have it running. Uh, another one is that what if one object is a lot bigger than the other one? 
uh, and the small object is at rest. And then finally, what if the other object, which is the bigger object, is at rest? Uh, you can play around with this and kind of see um, see how your program kind of confirm the intuition behind the formula. Okay, two-dimensional version. So we have two bars, and they're going at different directions. So V1 is the velocity of the first one, V2 is the velocity of the second one. And they go in different direction and different magnitude. How do I solve this problem? And so it turns out that we can use the one-dimensional version to solve this one. And the idea is actually really simple. You first take this problem, rotate it so that the horizontal, and this becomes now a one-dimensional problem. And the reason is because once you rotate it, the vertical component of uh, the velocity of these bar, because they are parallel, they do not contribute to the collision. And the only thing that is contributing to the collision is the horizontal component, uh, which is now a one-dimensional problem. So it's a really simple idea. Um, so you resolve, So now that we have a one-dimensional problem, you can solve this problem to get the final velocities. Then we can use that to get the final velocity in two dimension. And again, once I resolve it and get the one dimensional answer, V1 final and V2, V2 final, uh, notice that the vertical component is not contributing to the collision and it's also not affected by the collision. And so this component is the same. Uh, this vertical component of the, the other bar is also the same. So you resolve the one dimensional version and then you keep the vertical component the same. And, and of course, this is the horizontal case. So we have to take the answer that we get from this case and rotate it back to the original coordinate system. And then we can find the, the final velocity in this system. Um, if you have seen my previous video, uh, I did a video on how to bounce a bar off angles. Uh, I'll put a link right here on the screen if you want to look at that. And in this uh, that other video, is the same trick. If you want to solve a problem that is at an angle, you rotate it so that it's flat solve the easy problem and then rotate it back to get the, um, uh, the other solution. And so this is exactly the same idea. Okay, so how, do, how does this work in, uh, in practice? Well, first we need to find the angle between the, the axis of collision and that is found by connecting the, the two center and find this angle. Uh, in processing, as well as in other languages, uh, a tan 2 would be uh, the function that allows it to compute this angle. It takes a dy and a dx. And then we're going to rotate um, each of the velocity. So, so we're basically rotating v1 velocity and v2 velocity so that everything is now horizontal with respect to the horizontal um, axis. And so rotating this is basically a matrix multiplication. Again, in the previous video on bouncing off angles, I talked about this, but here it is. So suppose that v1, this uh, velocity, is given by vx, vy then this matrix will get, get, get you to rotate Vx, Vy so that is now horizontal. So in other words, Vx, Vy becomes Vx1, Vy1, where Vx1 is the horizontal component, and V1, Vy1 is the vertical component. So this is now a very nice decomposition uh, that is with respect to the horizontal x-axis rather than uh, at an angle. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, let's see. So, so that's the rotation. And then once you rotate it, then now, again, the vertical component doesn't contribute. So you can ignore Vx, uh, Vy1 and Vy2. And then we can use the one-dimensional solution to find uh, Vx1 final and Vx2 final. And then we put it back together. And remember that Vx1 final is the one is the final velocity in the horizontal direction. In the vertical direction, it's the same. So I take that answer and I rotate it back so that I can obtain the original uh, answer in the original coordinate system. And this amount to multiplying by the inverse matrix, this is rotating uh, the other direction. Okay, let's see the distribution code for this case. Um, and so again, if you go to my website, linked below, you can see the distribution code, so you can program this yourself. Uh, so in the two-dimensional case, so this code is basically comments, a lot of comments that are helpful for you to uh, program this on your own. And so for example, you have to basically program this method, the collision method. It takes two ball objects. And uh, I put comments here that tells you how to find dx, dy, find a distance between them. Um, 
uh, when to when the when the object collide then you find the angle between them rotate the velocity as we talked about in the in the slides resolve it in the one dimensional case and then rotate it back and that's basically is the uh, the, the algorithm. So feel free to kind of use that code to program uh, those formulas. Um, okay, but there's a little bit of a, a problem. If I were to extend this to many bars, then there's uh, a little bit of an issue. So, so notice so far the algorithm only look at the velocities. We just resolve the velocities and then we just uh, make it move in the new velocity and then everything is done uh, correctly. Uh, we, even, we never even considered the positions of the bar. Uh, this approach, however, creates some glitches when there's more than more than two bars, or the bars are going at high speed. Uh, the reason is because when the bars are bouncing, you have a little bit of an, an embedded error, and you you can't see this because it's going so fast. But when the bar bounces, it actually is kind of overlapping first, and then when you change the direction, then you move it apart. Uh, but the problem is that when you have a lot of bars, this can create a problem where the bars are stuck to each other. So let me explain what that means. Um, so the so first thing is that we have to kind of look at the position of the bar. And so in this uh, picture, x1, y1 is 0, 0. In other words, it's the origin because we're going to be rotating with respect to the origin, which is at the center of the first bar, which is x1, y1. Um, and so we're going to rotate this uh, counterclockwise with the, with the angle given in the picture. And so dx, dy in this picture is basically the position of the bar uh, the relative position of the second bar with respect to this uh, this origin. Okay, so when we rotate this uh, dx dy, we apply uh, dx dy to the um, to the matrix. So this is rotating dx dy, so that now uh, dx dy becomes x two y two, and x two y two notice is now horizontal with respect to the the origin of this bar. So that's how you get x two y two. Okay, now, we, when we try to fix this, well, the bars are kind of embedded, so we want to fix this by moving it apart. And so one easy fix is to kind of take the, the final velocity that we resolve and then add it to the position. That way, they separate the two bars. But unfortunately, this, this um, solution will produce the, gl the glitch that I mentioned earlier. And the reason is because of this. If you have more than two bars, here's what happens. Um, so you check the first bar and the second bar and you notice there's no there's no collision uh, and so you check the second and the third ball and notice that there's a, a collision and so you fix it by moving them apart but the problem is that when you fix it then you created a problem with the first and the second ball and because we checked this already then that error is unnoticed and at the next frame when you try to move them uh, move the ball then this problem can get worse because now when you move the ball then this error can get bigger and then now the two bars are very stuck and then when you realize that they're stuck and you try to undo this um, the the velocity is not big enough so that when you try to undo them there still is an error and so this happens when you have multiple bars uh, and and so the previous solutions that I did for the two-dimensional doesn't work so here's the uh, easy fix the fix is to move them so that uh, you move you move the bar by the amount that is equal to the overlap of the ball. Because the problem before was that when you move them by a fixed amount um, and you have balls that are overlap by a lot, then that move doesn't really fix the problem. Uh, but if I have always moved by the amount of the overlap, then whenever I have this problem, this will always be fixed uh, right away. And so the overlap of the two balls, if this is assuming this to be uh, horizontal, is the radius of the first ball plus the radius of the second ball minus the, the distance between the two balls. So the sum of the radii minus this, this distance is equal to the overlap. So once you have an overlap, you basically move each bar by half of the overlap. Um, and you have to use uh, Vx1 final and Vx2 final to get the direction because these are going different directions. Um, but the point here is that you just take the position x1 and x2 and you add to that half of the overlap. That way, the two bars are move exactly ha um, apart, so that they now uh, completely uh, they are they now intersecting at one point. That's basically it. And this uh, algorithm is due to Keith Peters from his book HTML5 Animation with JavaScript. I basically converted to processing, uh, but 
thanks for watching and hopefully you can try to code that um, and if you like the video please subscribe and like and I'll see you in the next video thanks